Welcome everyone to the fifth edition of Econ Poll. My name is Mike Tracy the Roman. I will be facilitating this 2021 edition of this gathering. We're all meeting virtually, but in a fast changing world, perhaps adapting to changing uh, new normals is what is normal now. With that spirit of adaptation, we're all gathered here for these two days of conversations and sharing of research. And of course, we begin on the same day as the G20 finance ministers and central bank governors convene in Washington for their fourth meeting under the Italian G20 presidency. Now, the discussions in Washington will be on issues related to the international economy and global health and on the efforts geared towards more sustainable growth. Now, we know that global recovery is happening at a solid pace, but mainly thanks to the rollout of vaccines, but it does remain uneven across and even within countries and exposed to downside risks. Here at EconPol today, we're going to be narrowing that focus uh, to essentially determine the state of fiscal resilience here in the European Union and just how prepared Europe is for future crises. Between today's keynotes of Olivier Blanchard and Daniel Gross and the plenary discussions and tomorrow's more academic focus sessions, we're going to do a deep dive into the latest research that we have on the topic and discuss it with experts from national and European institutions and also, very importantly, the private sector. The topics that we're going to cover in these two days include attitudes towards public policies, international taxation, public policies for a green transition, and of course, other relevant and current research from the EconPol network. Before I get started, I do want to cover a few bits and bobs of housekeeping uh, that we should all be aware of. The live stream of the program can be found on www.econpol.eu forward slash 2021 hashtag live. These are all on the record sessions, so please remember that as you share your thoughts and your questions. And of course, uh, the speakers are well aware this is all on the record. At the same time, I'll welcome some of the members of the press who are joining us today. Please do participate in the Q&A sessions. Your questions are as welcome as our academic circles. If you are on social media, do share your thoughts, ideas on what you hear in the next two days. Uh, the, uh, the hashtag to use is EconPol2021. Uh, and of course, you can always at EconPol Europe as well. Please do keep sending in your questions throughout the discussions. We're going to try and get to them quite early on in all the conversations that we have, with the exception of the keynotes, where the Q&A sessions will be right towards the end of the keynotes. Um, and if time permitting, we will put as many of those questions to our panelists and our sessions as possible. When you do that, please do ensure that you include your name, your organization, and whom, most importantly, you're putting your question to. So I'm going to dive straight in. It's my absolute pleasure to invite Clemens Fust, the president of the EFO Institute, to give us our welcome. Thank you very much, Maitri. It's a pleasure really to welcome you all very warmly from my side as well. Uh, now, I would like to say a few words about the guiding idea of this conference and, and, and the objective. Uh, but before doing that, uh, let me briefly explain what EconPol Europe is and why it exists. Uh, EconPol Europe is a network of 14 research institutes in economics from 12 countries in Europe, mostly but not exclusively EU countries. The objective of the network is to carry out research about economic policy issues which are relevant to European integration uh, and uh, to contribute to the public debate and to foster debate across borders uh, in Europe. The research is about things like sustainable growth and best practice, uh, EU policies and the EU budget, capital markets, uh, and governance and macroeconomic policy uh, in uh, the European Monetary Union, for instance. The network was founded in spring 2017 by the IFO Institute, along with eight renowned uh, European research institutes and uh, five additional partners joined the network in January 2019. And now the foundation of EconPol Europe was made possible, uh, possible by an initiative of the German Federal Ministry of Finance, which has provided financing for the first four years uh, of the network. Um, an important function of um, this network is to build bridges between the national policy debates in the member states uh, and the sometimes rather different debate uh, in Brussels. 
Uh, now, let me say a few words about this conference. As the title says, this conference is about resilience in the area of fiscal policy. Now, there was a time when economic policy debates focused on other keywords um, like competitiveness uh, or in the area of public finance on sustainability. Uh, since the COVID pandemic and the experience that it is important to be prepared for shocks, resilience uh, has become uh, a new uh, uh, as if, uh, uh, as it were, leitmotif of economic policy. Now, I think it's easy to agree that being resilient is desirable, but it is much more difficult to agree about what resilient uh, resilience really means in the area of economic policy, and in particular in fiscal policy. There are economists who say that resilience requires an active fiscal policy which supports economic growth and inclusion, uh, but the trouble is that this sometimes comes at the price of growing public debt. The debt to GDP ratio in the US is now higher than the, at the end of the Second World War. And in Europe, it has also reached record levels. In Italy, for instance, the debt to GDP ratio is approaching 160%. Uh, now, one view is that this is not very much of a problem because interest rates are low and debt ratios can be reduced relatively easily if the economy grows and interest rates remain low. Therefore, some economists argue more resilience uh, actually requires, at least in the short term, even more deficit spending because fiscal policy is needed for public investment and other spending, which uh, makes the economy more resilient to future crises. The other opposing view is that the rising debt levels undermine fiscal resilience for a number of reasons, in particular because interest rates can change quickly and trust in the ability and the willingness of countries to service their debt uh, is fragile, in particular if these countries are members of a currency union. Now, the objective of this conference is to discuss these and other perspectives uh, on fiscal resilience. Uh, and uh, I believe that the opening keynote by Olivier Blanchard and the keynote later today by uh, Daniel Gross will offer two rather different perspectives on this debate. Uh, and the panel discussion will add yet uh, other perspectives. Now, I am very much looking forward to learning more about these complex issues and gaining new insights uh, into this question of uh, what fiscal resilience is and how we can achieve and improve it. Uh, now, let me stop here. Uh, I'm sure this will be an exciting conference. Uh, conference. I wish uh, all of you a very nice day. And over to you, Maitri. Thank you.